Hi guys, Mike here. Welcome to episode 4 of the Endless Runner mini-series. In this episode we are going to set up our inputs and the input handling in our run character class and finally to get this guy running. So what are we doing exactly? We are setting up our project inputs in the project settings, then create some functions for some of these inputs in our run character class and bind inputs to these functions and some functions that are exist in our base character class that we are inheriting from. And then to get this guy running, we implement the running in a tick function and test our character running and jumping in the scene. So let's get started. So in our project, let's go to edit project settings and scroll down a little bit here to click on input. So what we need to do right now is to add some action mappings for jumping, for moving left, right, and moving down. Jumping, as the name says, to make the character jump. Left, move left and right for changing lanes. And move down is, is a special key that when the character is jumping later on, you can hit the down key that he automatically goes down to, on the, to the bottom and stops jumping. We don't need any axis mappings for this, like you would see in the normal third person character movement, because we are not moving the character with WASD. Running is automatically, and we just need to move left, right, have jump, and move down. So let's add some action mappings. Click on the plus button under action mapping and say jump. We add the spacebar as the jump button. Then we add a new mapping for move left. And this is going to be the A button. So we need to scroll down. Here's the A. Another one, move right. That's going to be the D button. And another one, move down. And this is going to be the S key. And we add one more, the down key. So you can either use the down cursor key or use the S key to move down. So this is our setup. So we have these four different actions that we can then use. So just close this. So before we implement the inputs, let's have a look at the older Endless Runner project that I'm referencing all the time. So here we have our character and just let's have a look at the event graph and see how we did in this as an example in this old project. So in this case here, the move left, move down and move right are not available in this project, but just to give you an idea of an input action for the jump. So usually what, when you're using blueprints, you're creating that input action for the input that you defined, and then you can call functions and do your stuff in blueprints. And the good thing about jump is that the base character class, it already has a jump and a stop jumping function that we can call. And then in the event tick, we will later on then implement the forward movement, so this is the code. We are having a look at it once we implement it and that you can see like th how this is done in blueprints and how we are actually doing it a lot easier in C++. And the move left, move right and move down function, we are creating some function templates for them or like we are defining the functions and have some empty functions because we are going to implement them once we have our floor pieces, our lanes and can switch between those lanes. But let's get this thing set up so that we have initial input handling set up to work with and get the running and jumping done. Let's head over to Rider into our project from last time and add those functions that we need, let's say under protected, for example, let's define them as U function, because when we are doing function binding in the setup player input component, which you will see in a second, these functions that we hook up or bind to, they need to be U functions, but we don't need to make them blueprint callable or it's just perfectly fine to just say U function and that's it. So we define our void move left. Let's copy these, make it a little bit easier, move right and move down and then use writer. Alt enter 
generate implementation. Here we have our move left. Do the same thing for move right and move down. So like I said, we are going to create or implement these functions in future episodes. So let's put these functions down here. And now let's set up our input component. As you can see here that we have like an event that is called once that, that input action is pressed or that key is pressed. And the way we will do it in C++ is we need to bind to our input that function. So let me show you how this is done. And then I, I type in for, let's say, move left. So we have our player input component over here that is passed in as a parameter to that function. And we use this parameter to bind our action. So we, we have bind action and bind access. Like I mentioned, we don't use access values or access, access bindings, but only action. So we bind the action. Then what it needs is a name. So let's say move left. Then we need to specify with actions if it's pressed or if it's released. In this case, we only use pressed. We use the constant from an enumeration called pressed. Then we need to specify the function that is called. So you could take another object that functions are called in, or we can use our own object, which are we doing? So this, and then the way to bind functions, we need a function pointer or the reference to a function. And like you see with variables, a reference uses the ampersand and then the variable. What we need to do is, let's say, copy this, use the ampersand, and then we define the function like this. So the class name, colon, colon, and the function name. And a reference to that. So now when move left is pressed, this function is called. And what we can try and do is just create a log entry that you can see that it works. So we are using the log temp, make it a warning so that it's yellow, that we can see it, and a text, and say move left was pressed. The same thing we do with move right and move down. And we are going to remove these once we implement these functions. So let's copy this, do the same thing for the move right and the move down right. So we are changing the function to move right and this one is going to be moved down and we change the name to move down. So this is how we bind actions to functions. Now, the only thing that is left now is jump. And jump is a little bit different. If we go back for a sec and see how it's done, then we can see jump when it's pressed, we call the jump function. And when it's released, we call the stop jumping function. And the way we do this, let's for the jump, let's copy this first line. Let's say jump. Then we have the pressed. Again, from this, because we are inheriting from the character class, so we actually have access to it. So it's still this object, but we are referencing the jump function. And you can see it exists from our base character class. Now we need the released. So let's copy this, type in released. So for, for the other actions, we only have pressed. But for the jump, we need pressed and released. And by released, we call stop jumping. But the name is the same, jump. This is how you can define releasing, pressing, releasing for an action and for the same action jump. And then we only have, like for the other three, only one pressed. This is how you bind functions to input actions in C++. Let's compile this. Compilation is done. Let's go into our project. And if we then go to window, developer tools, and have a look at the output log, right click, clear the log. If we hit play, nothing happens. But let's say we hit space, then we are jumping. And if we are hitting A, move left was pressed. You can see it down there. Move right was pressed and move down was pressed. 
So our input handling works. There are some jumping issues. We are needing to specify some more default values in our character, but right now input handling works. Okay, so before we implement the running, let's fix that jumping issue. And for that, as you can see, when we are jumping, it kind of like jumps twice or the animation looks weird. This is one thing that we forgot last time to disable. Let's go to our animation blueprint and we need to go into jump start and jump end. Select the animation and the thing here is that loop animation is on. We need to turn this off so that the animation only plays once and the issue that you saw is that the animation was looping and had this weird behavior. So under jump start and jump end, turn off loop animation. Now we save, compile, compile this one, save, and let's hit play again. And if we jump, you can see the animation plays perfectly. So now we can jump. You can saw, you saw in the output log that these other functions worked, that we binded them correctly. And now for the rest of the episode, let's implement the running of the character. So let's go back for a second to that older project. And you can see here that in the tick function, ignore is dead for now. That's gonna be implemented later. For running, we need to add or call the function add movement input with the right world direction. And because this character is always running, that's why we implement it in the tick and call this function every tick. And we get like control, get the control rotation, break it, make a new rotator where we set the X and Y to zero, only keep the yaw, the C value. And based from that result rotator, we call the get forward vector. And you can see here, Kismet math library, get forward vector, but you will see how to do it better because the Kismet math library, like I've shown you in the last episode, is only a wrapper around different functions or different possibilities to make it available in blueprints, but we can use it differently. So let's implement this. Let's go into our tick function. You can see it here. When we created the class, it was already generated the code and based from that blueprint. So we need to get a rotator, the control rotation, get control rotation. And let's get back for a second because I want to show you a really important thing, which you've seen several times in blueprints before, probably that you get the control rotation, break the rotator, get the value, make a new rotator to be able to pass it into other functions and so on. So breaking and making rotators means like we would need to create a new rotator set of values. But let's go back and we have this control rotation already. It's a copy from what we get back. So we don't need to create a new rotator. We can just use the one that we have because it uses only the C value, the yaw, we could actually set the roll and the pitch to zero. And the other value is still the same. So control rod dot pitch equals zero. And the yaw value is still there. And now we just need to call add movement input. And what you've seen, the forward vector, the UKismet math library, let me show you this real quick. So the blueprint version would call the Kismet math library and call the get forward vector. With control B, I go in here and what do I see? It just calls the, from that past rotator, it calls the vector function. So there is no need to call this UKismet math library, but rather get rid of this and use the vector function instead from our control rotation call vector. And that's it. So in comparison, we got the control rotation. We just set the values. We don't need to copy or create a new version or new rotation and then call the add movement input with the control rotation dot vector, which is the forward vector. And if you compare to this one where you, you get the control rotation, you break the rotator, you make a new rotator, get the forward vector from that Kismet math library to set it. This is so much easier in C++. So let's compile this. Now that it's compiled, let's go back to our project. Let's make this a little bit bigger. So let's scale this just a little bit like this and move that player start somewhere here so that we can see it's running. And if we hit play, we can see our character is running, it's jumping, just the movement and so on does not yet work. And what we can do now is he's running a little bit slow. Let's go to our run character 
to our character movement and change some default values. So the max walk speed from 600, we just do it 1500. And let's do the cut. So let's change some default values for the walk speed. This is originally 600, let's make it 1500 and also let's say the jump velocity you make it a little bit higher to 600 and change the air control to 0.2. So you can see here we change the default values now in our blueprint but we can also do that in C++. That's up to you to try. And save it, hit play and you can see now this guy is running faster and jumping a little bit higher. So now we implemented our running our input handling, everything works, got it set up. So for next episode, we are going to create the, the basic floor tile system, create a four tile class and set up our lanes and get this thing going. So thanks for watching and I hope you liked this episode. So please like and subscribe it. And if you have any questions, please feel free to ask them in the comments. I will gladly answer them. So then see you next time.